Hey Leo, it's me Stormy and here's your horoscope for October 2018. And Leo, before we jump in, you have the opportunity to take advantage of the 2018 holiday gift. It is up in the description box down below. It's my yearly um, holiday sale that I do for you, so make sure you check it out, okay? Now Leo, the big ticket item that's happening this month is we've got Venus taking her retrograde. And here's the deal. As soon as Venus is done taking her retrograde in November, we roll right into a Mercury retrograde. That's key and important, I think, at this time for you to understand that even though we've got this retrograde and it is to help you get some things going, probably things from the past, um, you're also going to continue to kind of look at and think over some things as we continue through the rest of this year. And I think as we move more into 2019, you find you have a little bit more forward motion. And I've gotten some very good channeled information for you Leos this month. So let's jump in here and go ahead and break this month down by date. Okay. Right at the beginning of the month, we've got Venus taking her retrograde here on the fifth in the sign of Scorpio. Now, because this retrograde is going to be split between, um, two different signs, Scorpio and Libra, it's going to start out in your fourth house and at the end of the month it'll start its retrograde path through your third house and we will talk about that in November, okay? So right here on the fifth of the month as Venus takes her retrograde, now first of all a retrograde, any retrograde pushes us back. We're looking back, we're looking at things from the past, we're revisiting, re-editing, reconnecting, rethinking, revising, reliving sometimes. This is the fourth house space for you. So in the fourth house space. This is, of course, home, family, real estate, property. But the feeling that I'm getting for you Leos this month is it has so much to do with your family history or your personal foundation. Like these are foundational root level things that have been a part of your life or a part of your story for a very long time. Now, of course, with Venus retrograde, this could also be a really strong connection to, um, women in your life or feminine energies in your life. So if you've had, you know, it can definitely, a retrograde can bring it back past lovers for sure. Absolutely. It can bring back because Venus is also um, really attracted to money. It could bring back past opportunities and maybe you're better, you're better prepared for it this time, but it can bring back things from the past. And in this feminine energy, I kind of see for you, maybe you are needing to know something about a woman from your past, or you're needing to connect in some way with information from the past maybe you're you know let's say grandma can tell you about it or an aunt or or something like that and they can bring information forward for for you now of course with Venus retrograde in the fourth you could be relooking at financial matters around home family real estate property you could be doing any of those things to actually not necessarily fix up old properties or things like that, but you could, where you would be fixing an old property is if it's something cosmetic. You maybe are doing that during the retrograde, but it would be a project that you had already started. It wouldn't be a new project because really you don't want to take on any cosmetic changes during a Venus retrograde because Venus comes out of retrograde and you're like, this looks terrible. This is the wrong color. That's not the paint I thought I chose. So just kind of keep that in mind if you are trying to make any changes to your home. Anything that had already been started Started or in motion, you pretty much have the support for, okay? When we get to the 8th of the month, we've got a new moon happening in the sign of Libra. This is going to light up, bring light, heat, um, new movement, new fresh possibilities with the sun and the moon connected here. Anything's possible. This is where we plant our seeds of intention for what we want this to be going forward. So with this big fresh breath um, put into your third house, what this could be is new communication, right? The third house is our first mental house, the house of the mind. So maybe you're thinking differently about things or your thinking is opening up. You could be communicating about something. You've got all of this energy running through your fourth house. Are you finally talking about something from your past? Because if you will bring it up, remember every retrograde sends us internally, right? It sends us seeking within and the idea is to get rid of it so that we can heal. Take it out of your energetic space, either do something productive with it or see it, confront it so you can let it go. So maybe you're talking about something from your past. Maybe you're studying. Um, the third house is also a really nice house for um, connecting information out. So if you're redoing a website, this could be a new website that you're doing or you're redoing something with it or you're trying to launch something out. This is also a house of study 
If you're studying something, this is a great new moon to begin studying something because you're going to absorb things very well during this cycle, right? Now, here's the other thing I think about a new moon, most specifically because it is in the sign of Libra, is that Libra is about balance. So I think in your thinking, in your communication, in your decision making, maybe something between siblings or neighbors, or maybe it's in where you connect with people, social situations, where is your equilibrium off? Where do you need to bring some harmony? Where do you have maybe, you know, Leo, do you have too much you and not of the right people, enough of the right people in your networking zone so you're not able to progress forward? Is it just you trying to work on that website and you're just not able to get it done? It might be time to ask for some help with that. You know, are you writing your biography? I mean, you've got all this fourth house stuff going on. Are you writing a biography? Are you telling your story? And maybe you need some help with that. Whatever it is, it's about finding where you need to balance so that your equilibrium is what it needs to be, okay? Libra wants that balance. Now, on the 10th of the month, we have got Mercury coming into the sign of Scorpio. Scorpio is going to be a very busy sign this month, Leo. So breathe it in, okay? This fourth house has got stuff going on. With Mercury moved here into the fourth house, again, I have this idea for you. You're communicating something out from a foundational level place, from maybe you're speaking up in a very feminine voice. Maybe you're speaking about feminine things. Maybe you're speaking about your mom. Like I said, maybe you're writing a biography or telling your story in some way, shape, or form or the story of your, your family, right? This could be definitely one of those things. Now with Mercury here in the fourth house, this is also very good if you have to make decisions around your home, family, real estate, or property. Um, you're pretty clear. You're pretty rational here. And I will tell you that when Mercury's in Scorpio, you're not always as polite as you are when um, Mercury's in other signs, but you're serious about what you're talking about. And I think that's very important, especially because we've got Jupiter up there. We've got Venus, who's in retrograde up there. We've got Mercury up there now. And in just a couple days on the 23rd, we're going to also have the sun up in Scorpio. So there is big change, big decisions that need to be made here. But this is so much a part of bringing this area to heal and bringing it to life, right? The thing is, is you already spent the past months finding your actual voice, speaking up for who you are, what you want, and expressing yourself. But now it's about you taking that voice into this area of your chart and making those nice decisions, making clear-cut decisions, right? You know what you want. You know where you're going here, um, Leo. So I think it's going to be beautiful to see what you do with it. Plus, wherever the sun comes, we want to be seen. We want to be known. We want to shine, right? So the sun is bringing light, heat, life, and vitality to your home zone. Now, of course, for some of you, you could be moving for sure, that's absolutely something that could be going on. But um, it could also be that someone who's already left your house is trying to come back, right? <laughs> so just keep that in mind. Whatever is happening here, this is a beautiful energy for transformation for this area of your chart. Now, on the 24th, we've got the full moon happening in Taurus, which hits at the tip top of your chart. Okay, so it's going to be in your midheaven space up there with Uranus. Now, whenever we get... Uranus, wherever that's at, we're going to have things change. It's going to be different. We're going to want to go against the grain, do things that are unique, special, our own way, individualistic. We're rebelling against what has been. So we already know that you're going to have work-related change. Now, this full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So this will bring a workplace shift. We know that. It's in the sign of Taurus, so it's a grounded energy. So this could very much so be in your favor. Maybe you're getting that promotion at work. Maybe you're turning in a project and it's really got your own beef and your own flavor on it, right? Like you're like, this is my project. This is my work. This is my gift I have to give to the world, right? So it's a very... Um, um, it's a really powerful time where I think you're getting to come out in your career in a completely different way. Either way, over the next four weeks, expect changes in your work zone. Yes, some of you could absolutely be losing your jobs. This is a full moon. It looks to take some things away that don't belong anymore. If you are in a job, in a career, in a company that you don't belong, whether you are ready to go or not, the universe may be pushing you along for your greatest good. So if that is something that comes up for you, if you lose the job, you lose the contract, you lose the whatever. Look at, is there anything that you actually did to you to lose it? What's your part maybe in it, right? Which doesn't mean beat yourself up, Leo. That is not what that means. It means look at where can you improve if you lost it. And the other thing is, instead of saying, why is this happening to me? 
ask what it's trying to teach you and move on because this area of your life is trying to shift, okay? Now, as we get to the 26th, we've got the sun actually in a conjunction with Venus up there in Scorpio. And I think that this is important to know because it's going to change your social life. Okay, it's going to bring new people, new flair, new breath into your life. And it could also be bringing a little bit of new finances as well. Or finances that are coming to you. Maybe you've been working for them for a while and they start to show up. I really have this connection to you. Maybe you're telling a story or you're telling something about the past. And there could be very much, there could be value attached to it. Let's say you do write that biography or an autobiography of someone. Um, there could be finances attached to that. So however that translates in your life, okay? Now, as we get to the 31st, we've got a couple things going on. First of all, Mercury is going to move on and move up into the sign of Sagittarius. So this lights up your fifth house space. Again, you've got Mercury in a very expressive place. But Mercury in Sagittarius, who's a fellow fire energy, is very open-minded. It is very open-minded. You may be considering things from a perspective that you didn't before, and so you're able to express differently. Maybe you're going to um, begin plans to start a new business. Maybe you're going to be taking up something that you find joy or pleasure in. This could definitely be conversations or decisions needing to be made around children. The fifth house is a house of conception. Maybe your body has decided, yep, we're doing this. You know, there's just a lot of savvy decision making and conversation that could be coming up. But in the tone of Sagittarius, it's very optimistic, but it's also very open, open, open minded. So this is useful to you. Also on the 31st, that Venus retrograde is going to slip from from Scorpio and move back here into Libra. So it is backing it on up, okay? And that will light up your third house space. So you're thinking, we're gonna be re-looking at the value of your thoughts. We're gonna be re-looking at your self-esteem and your thinking, you know, are you having a lot of negative thinking, things like that. We're gonna talk a lot more about that as we get into November, but just know as we get towards the end of the month, we're gonna make that move out of the deep, private, intimate sector of Scorpio and more into the balance and where do we need harmony sectors of Libra, okay? All right, Leo, I think it's going to be a fabulous, fabulous month. We're coming into fall. I'm really excited about the whole thing. I hope to see some of you in your 2018 holiday appointments, so make sure you click in the description box, take advantage of those things, and please let me know how these things are manifesting from you. If some of you are writing books, like I just have a feeling I'm getting that channeled information that a couple of you are going to be writing, even if you're just writing out your story and you never share it with anybody, or if you're actually writing that book, you're telling us your story, you're writing about your mom, whatever it is, somebody out there is writing and getting ready to share this story with the world. And if it's you, I would love to hear from you. I want to hear from you anyways. But if, if it is you, let me know about it in the comment section down below. Okay. All right, you guys, I love you so much. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.